In the vast story of human history, there are chapters so dark that they were almost our final pages. Moments when the human story didn't just struggle, it nearly ended. Times when every living person on earth could have fit inside of a single sports stadium. Because everyone else was gone. It sounds impossible now. There are over 8 billion of us scattered across every continent. But if you look deep enough, not in bones, but in our genes, the record is clear. Our species hovered on the edge of extinction, not once, but twice. Silent traces hidden in our DNA tell the tale. Two catastrophic events, where the human population crashed so low that only a few thousand survived to pass on their genes. And yet, against all odds, we made it. And those ancient struggles didn't just test our survival, they shaped us. What happened in those dark ages? How close do we come to vanishing? And could it happen again? Let's step into the shadowy corners of our past, where extinction wasn't theory, but a looming, ever-present threat. To understand why these events nearly wiped us out, you first have to grasp what a population bottleneck really is. A population bottleneck is one of evolution's most brutal tests. It happens when the number of individuals shrinks so drastically that almost all genetic diversity is lost. The survivors, if there are any, must rebuild the population from a dangerously narrow pool of DNA. Why does that matter? Because genetic diversity is the key to survival. It's the raw material of evolution. When life throws new challenges, diseases, climate shifts, predators, diversity gives some individuals a fighting chance. Without it, a species is fragile, vulnerable. One epidemic or one bad winter could end it all. This is why conservationists today fear bottlenecks in endangered animals. It's why cheetahs, for example, with their dangerously low genetic variation, are at a constant risk. One new virus could wipe them all out. But we humans, we went through this exact same trial, twice. But just how dangerous is a bottleneck? Consider the Wrangell Island mammoths. After mainland mammoths vanished around 10,000 years ago, a tiny population survived on this remote island off Siberia. It was fewer than 300 individuals, and at first they clung on. But over time, inbreeding and harmful mutations crept in. This affected their fertility and even their sense of smell and it became such a problem that even basic survival became impossible. By 4,000 years ago, they were gone. And that could have been us. Because genetic studies now show two terrifying episodes when our species face similar fates. Two near-death experiences that, if things have gone slightly different, would have erased humanity from history. So how close did we really come? The first genetic bottleneck happened around 900,000 years ago way before Homo sapiens even existed. This was a time of enormous climatic upheaval. A 2023 study used an advanced new method called fit coal to peer into ancient human history. They didn't need million-year-old bones. They used something far more powerful, the DNA of over 3,000 modern humans. By analyzing tiny patterns, they reconstructed the population of our distant ancestors. And what they found was staggering. Between 930 and 813,000 years ago, the human lineage suffered a catastrophic crash. The entire global population may have shrunk to fewer than 1,280 individuals. To put that in perspective, imagine a disaster today that leaves only 1,200 people alive on the entire planet. That's not a city, that's a village at best. Truly an extinction-level event, and this wasn't just a brief dip. The population remained critically low, hovering near extinction, for over 100,000 years. You might ask, how can they possibly know what happened a million years ago? Because even though ancient bones are rare, DNA remembers. By tracking how certain genetic variations spread and shift over time, scientists can see past population sizes. It's like tree rings in a genome, and with tools like FitCol, they can read those rings more clearly than ever. The findings matched another eerie clue, the fossil record. There's a gaping hole, a missing layer between 950,000 and 650,000 years ago. Hardly any human remains. Why? Because there were hardly any humans left. But what triggered this catastrophe? The likely culprit? Climate collapse. This was the early to mid-Pleistocene transition, an age of deepening glaciations and plummeting temperatures. 
Global oceans cooled, drought spread, and species vanished from the fossil record. One suspect in this chain reaction is the Atlantic Meridional Overturning Circulation, the massive ocean current system that helps regulate Earth's climate. When it falters, disaster follows. It's been blamed for later events like the Younger Dryas, and may have contributed here too. For early humans, still primitive, still lacking mastery of fire, it was a fight for survival in a cold, barren world. That first bottleneck, fewer than 1,300 individuals for over 100,000 years, wasn't just a numbers game. It reshaped us at a genetic level. During this same window, something extraordinary happened deep in our DNA. Chromosome fusion. While chimpanzees and gorillas have 48 chromosomes, modern humans have 46. The difference? A fusion of two ancestral chromosomes in what we call the human chromosome 2, a key marker separating us from other great apes. The timing is remarkable. This fusion likely occurred during or just after the great bottleneck. Could this merger have contributed to speciation, creating a new human lineage? Some scientists think so. You know something I think about a lot? We spend so much time fascinated by ancient humans, the way they adapted, survived, and changed their world. And today, a lot of people feel stuck. You're in a job that doesn't excite you, that won't last or worse, that could be replaced by AI in a few years. That's real. Burnout is everywhere. More than half of US workers experience some kind of burnout, and so many are looking for a way to survive. I mean literally to survive balancing between overworking and doing something we really like. That's why I want to tell you about today's sponsor, Triple Ten. Triple Ten is an online beginner-friendly bootcamp that helps people change careers and start a job that they will actually like. They offer flexible programs you can do while working and flexible payment options so you can choose one that actually works for you and your budget. And these are jobs that actually last, and Triple Ten teaches you how to adapt in an always changing world, like business decision making and AI implementation to your work routine. Here's the best part. If you don't get hired within 10 months, they have a 100% money back guarantee, no risk. So if you've ever thought about pivoting to something more future-proof, this is your chance. Learn a new career starting at $200 a month. Just click the link in my description or scan the QR code on screen for a free career consultation with Triple Ten. All right, back to the video. In other species, severe bottlenecks can drive rapid evolutionary shifts. The survivors aren't just fewer, they're different. It's possible that this ancient crisis didn't just threaten human ancestors with extinction. It may have created the evolutionary path that led eventually to Homo sapiens. By the time the population began to rebound around 813,000 years ago, these changes were set. The survivors were genetically distinct, and they had weathered the worst, but they were not unscarred. Even today, traces of that ancient struggle remain in our DNA, like old wounds passed from one generation on to the next. Fast forward to a more familiar chapter, the rise of Homo sapiens. Roughly 300,000 years ago, modern humans appeared in Africa. Over time, they grew, explored, and began to look outward toward the unknown. That ambition would trigger the second great bottleneck. For years, scientists thought that a single event might explain it, the colossal Toba supervolcano eruption in Sumatra. This eruption occurred around 74,000 years ago, about the same time we thought humans left Africa. It was catastrophic, 10,000 times more powerful than Mount St. Helens. The Toba catastrophe hypothesis proposed that the resulting volcanic winter nearly wiped out early humans. But the evidence doesn't fully support this. Genomic data shows no sharp global loss of diversity around 74,000 years ago. And in key areas like East Africa, there's little sign of the kind of severe prolonged climate collapse that would have matched a true bottleneck. Instead, what likely happened was slower, but no less dangerous. Between 100,000 and 50,000 years ago, small bands of Homo sapiens began to leave Africa. It wasn't a single migration, but waves. Some failed, some temporary, and some lasting. And this is where the second bottleneck hit. These early migrants didn't take large genetically diverse populations with them. Genetic studies show that the groups who ultimately succeeded, the ancestors of all non-Africans today, were tiny. Incredibly small gene pools ventured out into the unknown, vast territories. But how small were these groups? One 2015 study looked at paternal and maternal lineages across 51 global populations. The results? 
successful migrations may have involved as few as 25 females and 15 males, a founding population of barely 40 people. Just imagine the fate of every non-African human alive today. Every language, every culture, descends from a few dozen ancient pioneers. It's hard to overstate how risky this was. These tiny groups faced unfamiliar climates, new predators, unknown diseases, all with minimal genetic toolkits to adapt. One bad winter or pathogen in an entire lineage could vanish, and some undoubtedly did. But those who endured by wit, by will, and maybe a little bit of luck, spread across the globe, carrying their narrow gene pools with them. This is why, even today, genetic diversity is greatest in Africa, our species' homeland, and lower in populations that left Africa. To truly understand how remarkable this survival was, look at our closest relatives, the Neanderthals. They were once widespread across Europe and Western Asia. For hundreds of thousands of years, they thrived, masters of the cold, skilled hunters and toolmakers. We interbred with them, as shown by Neanderthal DNA still found in most modern humans. But in the end, they didn't make it. But why? Evidence points not to a single cataclysm, but to long-term bottlenecks. Neanderthal genetic studies reveal strikingly low diversity. They were small, isolated populations with high inbreeding. This caused harmful mutations to accumulate. A 2019 study of 13 Neanderthal skeletons found rare congenital defects, physical signs of inbreeding stress. Another study of inner ear anatomy showed a sharp loss of diversity in late Neanderthal history, exactly what you'd expect from a shrinking, fragile population. In other words, they didn't vanish in a day. They faded, trapped in a demographic spiral they couldn't escape. And why did we survive when they did not? This is a great question. Both species faced bottlenecks. Both faced brutal ice age climates and new challenges. But Homo sapiens had one enormous advantage, Africa. When migrant groups braved the perils of Eurasia, a larger, more genetically diverse population remained in Africa, a biological backup that could replenish numbers and innovation. Neanderthals had no such backup. Isolated in Ice Age Europe with no large refuge, they were vulnerable. In the end, it wasn't just strength or tools or even intelligence, but diversity that helped humans survive. The human story, as unstoppable as it seems today, is built on narrow escapes. First, a catastrophic crash 900,000 years ago, leaving barely 1,300 ancestors alive. Then, a perilous expansion 50,000 years ago, as tiny bands gambled everything they had on journeys into the unknown. We survived both, but just barely. The lessons? Diversity matters, number matters, and no species, not even us, is immune to extinction. Today, we face new dangers. Unlike ancient glacial cycles or volcanic winters, the threats now come from within. Nuclear weapons, pandemics, climate change, ecological collapse. And though we number in the billions, a true bottleneck isn't just about population size. It's about genetic resilience. Could a future crisis leave us vulnerable once more? It's not unthinkable, and perhaps that's why these ancient stories resonate. Because the shadows of those old bottlenecks still live inside of us, in our DNA, in our cultures, and in our caution. We are a species forged in survival. In this too, we are the lucky ones, because other human species like Neanderthals, Denisovans, Homo erectus, they face similar trials. So why did we endure when so many others vanished? Some answers are clear a larger homeland in Africa preserving genetic diversity, and perhaps above all, a willingness to move, explore, and connect. Because in small, isolated groups, genetic collapse is inevitable. But connection across tribes, across region, restores diversity, strengthening the whole. In a sense, our greatest evolutionary asset may not have been a sharper spear or a bigger brain, but the ability to share. We stand today on the far side of those ancient bottlenecks, Every human alive is descended from survivors of those dark times, from the 1280 who endured nearly a million years ago, from the tiny bands who ventured out of Africa, from those who refused to let the human spark go out. So the next time you hear about genetic diversity, endangered species, or ancient extinctions, remember, we've been there, and the choices we make now will shape the stories that are told 100,000 years from today. 
If you made it this far, you're one of the survivors, and I've got plenty more hidden chapters of our past coming, so hit like, hit subscribe, and join me as we uncover them, one story at a time. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Arrivederci.